Hello everyone! In this week's video, I am reviewing Parku markers. I did review Parku markers recently in one of my videos, but these markers are different, but they are still made by Parku. This video is sponsored by Parku, but all thoughts and opinions are my own. Also, Parku is doing a giveaway with me, but we'll talk about that more later in the video. So let's get started. These markers come in a set of 80 colors. They come in this nifty case. The markers are dual tipped. One side has a chisel nib, and the other side has a bullet nib. So these markers do not have a brush nib. Uh, when buying markers, a lot of people prefer brush nibs, uh, but brush nib markers are usually more expensive. However, these markers are alcohol based, so they should blend together nicely. One thing I love is that these markers come with a swatch chart. I don't have to make my own, <laughs> yay. So let's try out these colors. Swatching all 80 of these colors took me a really long time. It took me around an hour. But I'm so happy it came with this swatch chart. I was kind of dreading having to make my own and writing down all the numbers and testing out all the different colors. Uh, but having this chart made things go a lot quicker. I really like how the chart is thick and kind of on a piece of cardboard it seems. So it's nice and sturdy and I don't have to worry about ripping it and stuff. When filling in the swatch chart, I decided to use the bullet nib because it is nice and tiny and I can easily fill in all the areas. I always have a hard time controlling the chisel nib and I'm not very accurate with it. <laughs> so I was using the bullet nib. This 80 set of markers comes with a really nice variety of colors. One thing I noticed while I was swatching these markers is that the caps are on super duper tight for a lot of the markers. Some of the markers it was easy to pull off the cap but for a lot of the markers, I had to like really, really pull to make the caps come off. <laughs> uh, thankfully, some of them were easier to remove than others. Also, these markers definitely have a smell to them. I would say it's similar to like a permanent marker and kind of a Copic kind of smell. A lot of markers do have a smell to them. I would say these Parku markers have a bit of a stronger smell. The smell was a little bit stronger than some other markers that I've reviewed. It was kind of interesting to see how many grays come in this set. There are a lot of grays. You get the blue grays, the cool grays, and then the warm grays. Um, so if you like grays, you might want to consider these markers. <laughs> also, I was super excited to swatch the gold and silver marker, but the gold marker was kind of a letdown. It was just kind of a bright yellow, but the silver one is really cool. It's actually opaque and it's kind of shiny. I thought that was really neat. It was kind of like a paint marker. So here are all of the markers from this Parku marker set. Now I'm going to start coloring some pictures and these pictures were created by some of my viewers. I announced on my community tab that I was gonna be doing this and so many of you submitted line art and they were all so amazing. I wanted to color every single one. <laughs> so some of the line art I am coloring was randomly picked and some of it is picked by me. So this first picture is by Lo Sourry. I don't know if I'm saying your name right so I apologize. This one was randomly picked and I was really surprised when I got it because I actually follow this person on Instagram. <laughs> so I'm starting off by coloring her shirt. I decided to make her sweater pink in the middle and then I used a lighter blue for the sleeves. I think I used 182 for the sleeves and 138 for the sweater part. And for her socks, I used the same blue that I used for the sleeves. At first I wasn't sure if she was wearing like shorts or if she was wearing long socks. I decided she was wearing long socks. For her skin I used color 134 and I used 28 and 29 for the shading. I put shading underneath her hair and I also add a little bit of blushing on her cheeks. I apply the darker color and then I blend it out with the lighter color. For her hair I think I used color 97 and 93 for the shadows. I thought she would look really cute with brown hair, but I think I saw this picture on my Instagram and she might have had brown hair. So I might be why I chose brown hair. <laughs> so after applying the lighter brown, I used the darker brown for the shading behind her. And I also add a bit of shading to the bangs. I was actually kind of surprised by how well I was able to get the colors to blend out. I was kind of nervous about blending since there's no brush nib. I decided not to color in her eyes because I wasn't sure what color to use for the stars in her eyes so I just kept them white like they're a highlight. And then I used BG1 for the shadow in her eyes. And then lastly I re-go over some of the areas for the shading. So here's my colored version of Lasari's line art. I hope you like it and I had a lot of fun coloring her. This next picture is by Kiwi and the character's name is Michael. 
I think this character is so cute. There's just something so charming about it and something that I just really, really love about the character. I don't know, he's just so cute and simple and I really like his face. It makes me want to draw super simple, cute, tiny characters. So this picture actually had a color scheme sent with it, so I didn't have to pick colors. I just had to try to find colors that were close to the colors that they had picked. So his jumpsuit is orange and has stripes on the one sleeve. And then his shoes are a dark blue. And then his tail and his hair are a lighter blue. For filling in the tail, I used the chisel nib a lot to fill in that area because it was so large. Also, the chisel nib lets out a ton of ink and they are super juicy. It was actually kind of nice because the ink would flow super, super nicely. And lastly, I'm filling in his skin tone and adding a little bit of shading. I also add a little bit of shading to his tail and the hair with the darker blue that I used for the shoe. Oh, I also forgot I added a little bit more shading to the jumpsuit with a darker orange color. I think I was using color 22, but I can't totally remember. So here's the finished picture of Michael. Thank you so much for submitting him, Kiwi. I hope you like it. So this next picture is from Luminicia50. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> I'm starting off by coloring her hair because I figured that'd be the part that would take the longest because she has a lot of hair to color. I decided to make her hair a dark gray. Uh, I was thinking about just making it black, but I thought a darker gray would be nice to, because then it wouldn't be so harsh. Um, for her hair, I think I used BG, I actually can't remember what I used. I think I used CG4, CG6, and CG9. And right now I'm just starting off by filling in the base color of the hair, not doing anything super fancy, just trying to get down a flat layer of color. After I fill in the flat layer of color, I use CG6 to start adding some shading. I actually switch over to CG9 a little bit later because the CG6 wasn't quite dark enough and it kind of just kept disappearing into the hair, uh, whereas the CG9 was a little bit more prominent. Overall, I was able to get these markers to blend. I was definitely having a harder time getting them to blend with the hair. Uh, I could tell that they weren't blending as nicely as when I used my brush nips. I don't know, there's just something different and I was kind of struggling a little bit to get all the colors to blend out nicely and fade nicely. I guess it's harder to get like a tapered shadow. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It just felt a little bit more tricky. <laughs> She has a lot of hair kind of going all over the place. So I was actually having a hard time deciding how the hair was flowing. <laughs> I was kind of confused by it. But I was trying my best to have the shading flow in the way that the hair is flowing and having it make sense. Uh, so I hope it looks okay. So after filling in the hair, I start filling in the skin. Once again, I'm using color 134. I also add some shading with color 29 and 28. I apply these and then blend them out with color 134. This character is really cute and unique and I really like her kind of messy and crazy hair. Next I started using some purple. I used purple in her hair tie thingy and I used purple in her sweater and in her eyes. I used a darker purple for her pupils and then I used the lighter purple to color the eyes. I just noticed that she's wearing a vest. At first I kept thinking it was a coat, but then I looked at it and I'm like, oh, it's a vest with a sweater underneath. I don't know why that took me so long to understand, <laughs> but I'm glad I figured it out. Um, so for her vest, I make it a teal color. I thought the teal would be kind of a nice color to go with the purple. I don't know. I just thought it would look nice. <laughs> I think I used colors 65 and 63 for the vest. And then for the shirt, I used 75 and 83, I believe. I wanted to try to color this whole picture without using any color pencils. I wanted to use only the markers, but I really felt like I needed to add some highlights to her hair. So I used a white color pencil to add some highlights. So here's my finished version of Lumencia 50s art. Thank you so much for submitting her. And last but not least, we have this picture by Ria underscore M dot art. So let's start coloring this picture. When I saw this line art, I was super excited to color her hair. I decided I wanted to keep the coloring fairly simple, but I wanted it to change to a different color at the tips. 
I guess it's not really a different color, but it's a lighter color. So for her hair, I use color number three. And then for the tips, I use color number 18 and I make them blend together. I was kind of happy I could make the darker color kind of blend with the lighter color. You can still kind of see the transition from the darker color to the lighter color, but I didn't really mind it and I thought it looked kind of cool actually. So I'm just filling in all of her hair and I used color 166 for her pigtail holder scrunchy things. And I'm just trying to fill in all of her hair. I was really nervous when coloring the super thin strands. Thankfully, they weren't so thin that I couldn't color them with the bullet nib. Like I mentioned before, there were so many amazing pictures submitted to me. And thank you so much to everyone for submitting line art. You are all so talented. But I was kind of surprised by how many people submitted line art that wasn't theirs. Like I could tell it was traced because I had seen other pictures online. Like one person submitted a traced picture of Link and I know my Link fan art. <laughs> so you weren't going to fool me with that one because I had seen the picture before. Um, but there were a lot of you that submitted original art. So thank you so much to everyone who submitted their own art. <laughs> Next, I'm starting to color the skin, and this picture is a little bit different because I'm not fully coloring the skin. I'm only using the skin tone in the areas where there are shadows, and I actually really, really liked doing this. I felt like it made the picture look really cool and have a lot of contrast. I don't know. I think I'm the most happy with how this picture turned out. Um, just because I felt like the coloring turned out kind of cool with the skin, and I really like how her hair turned out. And I felt like I was starting to get more comfortable with the markers around this point. So what are my thoughts on the parkour markers and do I recommend them? I feel like these parkour markers are really nice. They're definitely comparable to Ohuhu. Ohuhu markers are about the same price as these markers and they both have chisel nibs and bullet nibs. I would say the most different part is the color selection. So you may want to look at which colors come with parkour markers and which colors come with Ohuhus and decide which colors work the best for you. Overall to me they work pretty much exactly the same. I've reviewed Ohuhu markers before and yeah, they feel very, very similar. They get two thumbs up from me. They work very nicely. And I feel like they can be a good set to get if you're wanting to get into markers for not super expensive. Also, Parku decided to do a giveaway with me. They're going to be giving away a set of these markers. And you can click the link to Rafflecopter to enter the giveaway. Thank you so much to Parku for doing this giveaway with me and for sponsoring this video. So here are the pictures I colored in this video. Once again, thank you so much to everyone who submitted line art. I had so much fun coloring other people's pictures and I definitely want to do it again in the future. If this is something you'd like to see me do again in the future, please let me know in the comments. Anyways, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!